Hi guys, Kim here. Welcome to Backyard Blooms. In today's video, we are going to start our flower garden here on the side. So we have two really large bags from Super Sod of some really nice compost that we're going to put down. This hill right here has been neglected for the last couple of years because I knew that I did not want to invest in a lot of uh, either sod or nice grass seed because I knew that this area just not going to do well. We are really close to this house right here, so it doesn't get a lot of good sun for the Bermuda grass. So anyways, I knew that I wanted to plant it up and it's time we're going to do it. So this is like maybe part one or day one that we're going to get started. Like I said, I had the uh, two big large bags from a uh, super sod and it's called big yellow bag and I'll show you the picture of that. But this is the area that we're going to work be working on. Now this area and I'm going to turn the camera around and show you a little closer, but the hill is starting to erode. And one thing that you can do, of course, we're going to put down some new fresh soil, but you can plant it up to be able to prevent that erosion. So once I get all my shrubs or perennials or any type of annuals in this hill right here, that will help the erosion. So for one, we're going to put down the soil. Then this Thursday, I have seven yards of nice black mulch coming so i'm not sure if it's going to take all that but i hope that i'll have enough to be able to top dress all my other gardens as well and then we're going to get a border to put all the way down here too so i need to work on getting that so let me turn the camera around and show you exactly what we're dealing with so there is the big yellow bags of soil that we had delivered so really nice good compost that we're going to be dealing with and all my plants and shrubs are going to love being in that soil. So let me turn the camera around here real slow. So this is the front flower garden. Tulips are coming up nicely. And here on the side. So this border right here was around the front of our tree that got demolished. So we're trying to repurpose that. We did half here and half there. So I need to fill the soil around these areas as well because we dug up the rocks that were right there. Rocks were right there in that location. So I wanna get some nice soil in there and then I could be able to plant that up. I think that'll look really nice. Some annuals here and then some annuals at that base over there as well. So I did not kill any of the sod. For one, our sod is dormant. These are weeds. This is poa grass. And I hate to see all this go to seed because I'm gonna be dealing with a mess later, but this is my neighbor's side yard right here. And this is mine. So you can kind of see our property is maybe just a little bit further over from here. Maybe I'm gonna say another 12 inches or so. So we're just gonna start there and come all the way across with the border start there and come all the way across with the border. Now if I had a lot of weeds or sod in this area then I would probably put down some type of cardboard or newspaper first before I put my first layer of soil. So the whole idea behind this is to put it thick enough that it will not get sun and then if it doesn't get sun then it should not grow up above that. So I believe my husband was gonna come and just maybe rake some of this dormant, let's see, rake some of this dormant grass up. But it may just even like kind of pull up, but he said he was gonna rake it or scalp it first. I'm gonna try to get up all the weeds that I can just by pulling them. I don't have a whole lot in this area to deal with. But can you see where it was starting to erode right here? So this whole hill just doesn't get a lot of sun, like I said, and I guess the dirt just starts here and just eventually works its way into that area right there. This is actually where it drains between our houses, like all the way down and out towards the lake down there. But hopefully by adding the soil back on top of it here 
and the mulch and planting it up that we're going to prevent this hill from eroding. So you can see that this other side of my cottage garden is actually on a really steep hill as well. So planting that up right there and all the way down with those junipers, junipers have helped me prevent that from eroding. So I do need to get some type of barrier to prevent the sod from going into the flower bed and from my mulch not getting into the sod. So I have two options. So I can either go with something like this all the way down, which I do like, or I can go with the metal. Right now, metal is more expensive than the mulch, so I need to make a trip to Home Depot or Lowe's and figure out which one I'm gonna do. I think either one of them will look nice. Let me turn the spin around here and just kind of show you what we're going to deal with. I don't have too many things to go around right now. I have two standard limelight hydrangeas, one here, one down there, and a climbing rose at the very end. So what we'll do is remove this border right here and kind of like probably either just carry it on here and then make a trip later on tonight to get some more border but it holds it in nicely. And it does stop the Bermuda from growing in to it. So you can see I have a really thick, thick layer of mulch, about two inches there, which I always continue to have. And I don't deal with a lot of weeds that I have to pull up. So that's gonna be step one. So we're gonna try to pull up some of these weeds and maybe rake some of this old sod here and then put a really thick layer of soil down and mulch and then our trim and we should be good to go for a really nice flower bed to plant up this year. Hello again, it is day two, and I'm going to show you what kind of work we got done on day one. And today we had delivered seven yards of black mulch that we're gonna put on top of the soil that we got from Super Sod. And I finally got my border today. I did actually got a rubber border, and I bought 20 of them, but I'm thinking I'm not gonna need all 20 of them. So can you see these gorgeous tulips behind me? pretty they are. I'm so excited. Spring's coming and I'll be so excited to be able to share all these gorgeous plants that I'll be able to put on this side garden here as well. So I'm going to turn the camera around. So there is seven yards of mulch. 
So we're going to have to put all this mulch in the wheelbarrow from the street and let's see, we're going to carry it down the side of the house here. Let's see my gorilla cart. That's been very helpful. Love my gorilla cart. So I'll try to find that link for you guys in the description. And let me just share these gorgeous tulips with you as well. Look how vibrant and pretty that is. Oh, so pretty. Anyways, this is the side garden that we've been working on. So day one, we've been getting a lot of the weeds out of the way and pulled up. And right here, there's a lot of poa grass that we had to pull up as well. So I'm trying to figure out exactly where I want to put this rubber border. So I'm not going to put this border here, right here, but I'm just using that as a guide, like from the house, whether it's going to be 10 feet, 11 feet from the house. So I can like move this over to this way just to kind of use it as a guide to make sure it's even from the house. So say I have almost three of these things minus like maybe two blocks or something like that. And I can use this as a guide to make sure this flower bed's even from the house over to this way. Sometimes you think you got it straight, but you don't. So this is the rubber border that I got. And for right now, rubber is a little bit cheaper than metal. And I bought this at Home Depot and it is Vigro brand. And you know, I thought these were three and a half feet, but it's a four feet. So that's why I got too many. Oh well, I can take some back. And then underneath this area right here, there is some stakes that are in there. As you can see, there's the stakes. And there is four holes. Let me show you this one that I already took the paper off of. There's four holes, so that's all you do is drive these stakes down into the ground. So I'm gonna have my husband do that since he's got a lot of more muscle than I have. Could probably make myself do it, but it would take me twice as long. So there's what my border is gonna look like, and this is gonna keep the mulch inside and the grass out here and not in here. So it's worked for me pretty well for the last four years. And this is the dirt that I bought. Of course, it's dried out all day long today, but good quality topsoil. So we moved everything to the top here. We moved everything to the top and then we're going to start way over there. And then after we get our border in, we'll move the soil down and then I'll work our way from here towards this and then we'll start putting the mulch down there on that end over there. So right now it is about 3, 3.30 and you can see that I still have some sun in this area and I'm starting to get shade from the house right next to me. However, in the summertime, the sun's more directly over top the house so it will get more sun in the summertime. So we measured this last night and it was about 62 to 65 inches. So that's what kind of flower bed that we're gonna have here. And I'd say the width there, this width is probably 10 to 10 and a half, almost 11 feet right there. So you can tell if those are four feet, four, yeah, four times three is 12. So almost 12 feet, so I'm gonna say 11 feet across. So we have a really good size flower bed that we're gonna be able to plant up 
this summer. I'm pretty excited. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do, but I do have already these limelight hydrangeas here, climbing rows, and I'm thinking in the middle here, I wanna get three of the lilac hardy hibiscus, and I think I'm gonna plant everything up in threes and fives is my goal, and I may even put a border all the way down of something. So pretty excited back up here so this is day two so of course I just told you what we're gonna do we're gonna start all the way at the very end put our border in pull the dirt down and then we'll start from that end and work our way down to this end towards me and put down the mulch so we'll see if seven yards is enough what do you think do you want to take bets to see if seven yards of mulch is going to be enough? Let me show you. So that is what seven yards of mulch looks like right there. It was such a blessing to have my two neighbors, Al and Al, to the right of me, help me re remove all the mulch from the road and into this flower bed right here. So as you can see, that big pile that I showed you earlier is diminished into this small pile. And I'm waiting to get some more dirt right here from Super Sod so I can put some thick compost in this area right here and I was able to spread it out all around that area and we got all this mulch right here now when my husband comes home he will help me with this border right here so that's not staked in yet it's just laying there ready to be pounded into the ground but this is what day two looked like
So day three, we finally finished up on the side garden. We got all of our mulch in and all the border in as well. We had to stop at Lowe's and buy some more compost because two of those big large bags from Superside didn't cut the bill for it. So I think I bought another 10 bags of black kale. So that's another one that I like for compost if you have just a small job to do. And I was able to get that at Lowe's and not actually at Home Depot. And I just kind of stick to what I know that I like. And I did like the black cow when you have to buy compost. So I was able to finish that up. And then you can see in the video that we were able to bring down that splash guard for the rain. So it doesn't like splash all the mulch away as well. So let me turn the camera around and show you our finished project. I hope you enjoyed this project and I hope this was helpful and I hope this inspires you to get out and do a new flower bed. So this is our finished project and we went with the black mulch because it looks really good up against this dark gray of the siding of our house 
and I went with the rubber mulch instead of the metal mulch right here. I could have divided that and brought that out, but I just told my husband to kind of keep it there for now. But I'll probably eventually pull that up and make it look one cohesive flower bed. So that's all you had to do for this border is just put it down on the ground. I did make sure I got all the weeds out in that area so I don't have weeds growing up in this area. But if I do, I'll just take some weed out all along here and that would take care of it. And that's all you do is just nail in the spikes. And I showed you that on the video. So this is 62 feet by 11 feet. And I already had this limelight hydrangea standard form tree there. And I planted that on purpose. So I'm sitting in my living room there that I'm able to see these gorgeous blooms from the outside. So think about that when you're planning, like what you're going to be able to see from inside out as well. I have a few rocks there. When I planted that, I had to use those rocks to keep the soil up because of the angle that I had to dig for that tree. So now I can just clean all the siding off here. So that will prevent all that mud and dirt from going up onto the hardy board there as well. So coming down to this end, there is my David Austin rose, the mill on the floss. That is a large rose, which she looks like a large rambler rose to me, but it's supposed to be like a large rose. She has very long canes. And this is another standard hydrangea tree. And then I left these just for some accent and I'm gonna plan on putting some annuals here in this swoop and in that swoop over there too. I thought that would be really pretty. We were able to um, fill all this in with compost there. So I have probably about an inch, inch and a half of a thick compost and probably a good two to three inches of black mulch on top of that. And then we were able just to tie in our border over here. So as you can see in the video, we have a downspout right there. So we were able to bury that downspout underneath the ground. So we're not able to see it. If we left the spout to be open right there, every time it rains, which it does rain when it rains here, it rains really hard, it would have just washed all this mulch away. So instead we buried it with a long, I think it was a four inch hose and then it comes out right here. So when it rains, this little thing will pop up and then the, 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 all the rain will flood out and drain down that way. That's how we have things drain in right now, which it stays wet. We may eventually need to do something different here. Hey girl. <laughs> 